Hey guys, friends and fam. Um, I'm going to do a really short video. I've had a couple teachings on my heart that I've released to Facebook just in typing. And I've thought about doing teaching videos, but first of all, it's just so much faster to type it than to do a video and to find the right time when my son is asleep. Um, but then the second thing is I come under so much spiritual attack when I do holiness preachings. And a part of me is like, I just, I don't know if I want to start another battle. I don't know if I want to kick the hornet's nest again. To be honest, I'm already under constant attack. So I'll, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to give me time if he wants me to release those teachings on um, just two separate teachings that I that I have on my heart. But anyway, this is a really short encouragement, guys. I hope we're at the end of the road. Um, I hope we're at the finish line. Pentecost is coming up this Sunday. It's the 5th. I am really hoping and praying that this is it. Because for those of you that are like me, that are watching for the Blessed Hope and preparing for the rapture, it has been a hard journey. And we're constantly under attack. And we're constantly scapegoated and hated by even other believers who don't like the truth. The lukewarm church that wants to be here for long. Um, they just reject our message. They listen to ear tickling messages such as revival is coming. Trump is going to get back in office. Things are going to get better again. Because those are ear tickling messages. Who doesn't want revival to come? Who doesn't want their whole family to get saved? I would like my whole family to get saved and be on fire for Jesus. But the scripture is clear that he comes at the midnight hour when all of the virgins are sleeping. And um, he's only coming for one out of seven churches that are ready, that are looking for him, and that are preparing and washing their robes in holiness. So he comes after a great falling away from the faith, not after a great outpouring of the Spirit. So there's been division between me and other people when I tell them the truth of what the Bible says, and it creates awkward moments, and it creates people that don't want to be friends with me anymore, and I don't like that. It's hard. It's still hard for me to accept. I don't like being rejected. Nobody does. I don't like losing friends. I don't like um, losing friends who, you know, were potential friends for my daughter, but now, you know, I told their mom the truth, and now they just don't want to hang out. They don't have time anymore. Like, it hurts me. It, it hurts me to see my daughter suffer because people hate the truth and I I'm such a person that I can't keep silent for long if I know that you know if I'm hanging out with you um, in real life and I hear you quote some false truths and I hear you know the people that you follow then maybe I'll keep my mouth shut for one week or two weeks but then like it just comes out I, if I love you if you're my friend I have to tell you where you're in error because it's so important to be in the truth, and the Bible is the standard of truth, so I don't want to get off on a tangent, but what I'm just saying is those of us who are in the truth and trying to set you know, friends free, even lukewarm Christians who are following man-made doctrines that are not scriptural, it's hard because there's the truth divides, and it's always the person's fault that's not in the truth. It's always their, their fault for the division. Um... But it's still hard. It's hard to lose friends. It's hard to be rejected. It's hard to be hated for the sake of the truth. His words. Jesus' words. So hang in there, you guys. That's all I'm saying. Pray for me for watching this. It's been attack after attack. It's been like the Lord is really strengthening my spiritual muscles, my endurance, my hope. Been walking through health issues. Been walking through attacks. Been walking through... Um, rejection of friends, all kinds of things. And I know you have too if you're closely following the Lord because we're promised trials and tribulations of many kinds. That's a promise to those who remain in Jesus. So anyway, all that to say, looking at Pentecost, the Jewish tradition holds that Enoch was born and raptured on Pentecost. That's interesting. You know, that's not written in our Bible. The dates aren't written, but the Jews have... Um, extra texts and, and oral traditions, so it could be true. It could be true that he was born on Pentecost and taken on Pentecost. And that would be quite interesting because the church was born on Pentecost. We already know that. And some people say, oh, Pentecost was fulfilled. It wasn't completely fulfilled. It was partially fulfilled. 
We were born on Pentecost. Will the faithful church be taken on Pentecost? I believe the rapture could fulfill Pentecost. Also, on Pentecost is when dispensations have changed. Um, that's when Moses went up to Sinai and the law was given and, to the Israelites. And, and Israel decided to get married to the Lord. They entered into a covenant with God. So that began, began that dispensation. The dispensation of the law. Okay, and then on Pentecost, um, in Acts chapter 2, the dispensation of the church age, where the Holy Spirit now uniquely indwells the church. That changed on Pentecost too. So could the next dispensational change be on Pentecost? When the bride of Christ is removed, and the five wise virgins, those who are in right relationship with the Lord, those who are filled with his spirit, who have not gone back to the world and let their oil run out, and not lost intimacy with the Lord, could we be removed on Pentecost, changing the dispensation again? Highly likely, high chances. So just wanted to hop on real quick to encourage you that this might truly be the end of our race. Please pray for me. I will be praying for you guys if you drop any comments, you know, need prayer for anything. Let's encourage one another. We're commanded to encourage one another with these words, the words of the rapture, the news of the rapture. We're looking for the blessed hope. We're looking for the bridegroom. We're not looking to go through part of the time of Jacob's trouble. We're not looking for the Antichrist. We're never told to be ready. We're never commanded to be ready for the Antichrist. We're told to be ready for Jesus. Over and over again, he warns us, be ready for the bridegroom. If you're not ready, if you're not washing your robes, if you're not looking for my coming, if you're not living in, in holiness, if you're not ready for my coming, it's the bridegroom that comes first. We're told to be ready for him. Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know at what time the bridegroom is coming. We're commanded to be ready for the bridegroom, not the Antichrist. He comes for his bride first. That's what starts the dispensational change. So here I am in this short video to encourage you guys. We're almost home. Let's hope and pray that it's Pentecost. Let's keep beckoning the bridegroom. Please pray for me. I just want to get out of here. I just want to escape. I know you do too. God bless you. Maranatha.